Jill Costanza. I'm the sports science director. This is my first year with the team. We are continuing to highlight the women behind the Detroit Lions who play such integral roles for this organization. Joining me now is Jill Costanza, Director of Sports Science. Let's start with your University of Houston grad, spent some time with the Houstons, then went back to, to school to work for the University of Miami. So what did your path look like that led up to the Detroit Lions? Yeah, I was a sport marketing undergrad major and I thought that was going to be my career path. Um, and then I realized there's, um, you kind of get stuck in terms of upward mobility. And I was looking, wanted to do something else. My dad uh, was a high school football coach and health teacher in upstate New York. And he had always really encouraged me uh, to become a coach. So I finally gave in and I was like, okay. And went and got my teaching certification. Um, became a physical education teacher and high school basketball coach where I kind of figured out uh, what I wanted to do with my life, so to speak, but fell in love with coaching and more importantly, the relationships and the people um, and leading, you know, young minds to, to their potential. Um, but it was through coaching, my girls kept getting ACL injuries and I knew it had to be something, you know, something more to it than just the, the Q angle. Uh, so started delving deeper into the science and I found strength and conditioning. Did not even know it was a profession. Um, and that's how I decided to go back to school and get my master's in, in SNC. You've also worked with mil military branches, U.S. military. So what did that role look like? First position, um, I was at the University of Texas after graduating. I had ties there after coaching basketball camp and joined their strength staff. Um, so went up just further north of Austin to Colleen where Fort Hood is working with more big army general population and um, just kind of providing education and how to train smarter and, and do more individualized type, type training because they were dealing kind of like every um, environment, just an injury epidemic, um, as well as cardiovascular disease, diabetes. So really providing that holistic approach to human performance. Um, wanted to get back into a more high performance environment and joined uh, the Air Force Special Warfare Program in San Antonio. And there we did uh, physiological monitoring, um, sleep monitoring, lots of utilizing different types of technology uh, to get that information to military leadership and, and more provide guidance for them to um, train smarter, but at the same time meet the objectives of, of the military. How much of what you just mentioned are you using here as director of sports science with the Detroit Lions? A lot. Okay. A lot in terms of, uh, you know, heart rate, internal load monitoring, external load monitoring and distances and speeds and change of direction, um, sleep tracking devices. Uh, something we were getting into the military too was eye tracking. And when uh, like a unit would enter or clear a building, they have particular spaces that they're supposed to be looking at. Um, and you think you are, but with eye tracking, we can actually see whether or not they are indeed. So, um, you know, in a military population, that becomes life or death. And on the football field, that's a difference between catching a pass or dropping a pass or making a tackle or missing a tackle. So um, there's a lot of different things just besides physiological monitoring in the sports science world. I feel like Amani Oruarie is has that eye tracking. He's got, it. He's got it down. That's <laughs> He's got it. He's that's got impressive. that visual spatial mm -hmm. awareness for sure. What does your day look like if you break it down for us? Sure. So usually we start, you know, first thing in the morning with a lifting session. So I'll be in the weight room for that. Uh, leading up to team meeting, I like to attend OD meetings and sit in position group because um, it's very important to understand the demands of the game. Um, the offensive and defensive schemes and I just love to sit and listen and learn because um, you have to you have to understand the game so that you can put the data into context and you know how to provide just kind of a guidance and roadmap for the coaching staff um, as well as the players because ultimately we want to get them to education and have them take accountability um, develop the habits and behaviors to take care of themselves as well um, so that leads us up to practice where I'm there with um, my computer. Um, Panay calls it my Gucci, my Gucci swag. <laughs> and I'm live tracking, just keeping eyes on distances, speeds, um, 
so I, high effort change of directions and we have a certain list of guys to, to keep eyes on and um, so doing that during practice and then after practice we have an additional lifting option um, after the lift I go straight up to my office look at practice data uh, analyze that with coach Clark who is our director of human performance and uh, sit down with him kind of go over what practice looked like and then uh, get a report ready to get to the coaching staff at the end of the day my primary focus is utilizing the technology kind of looking at the data trying to understand it put context to the data and be able to get that information to uh, the coaching staff um, strength and conditioning coaches, Catherine, uh, medical team. So it just kind of kind of center spoke of a wheel, so to speak, in, in disseminating that information. So when you're tracking during practices, and you mentioned high effort, running running fast enough, if, if you think that someone can give a little bit more during practice, do you go up to them in practice and kind of nudge them a little <laughs> bit, or do you wait so, for the, the post-practice report? You know, so you, Coach Campbell, you know, the coaching staff, they, they always push competition. Yes. So and it's funny too, the guys get, get bought into it and they'll ask me, hey coach, what was my speed on that? What was my speed? And then, you know, they'll go and give another player crap and be like, I was faster than you. So it creates that competition. It, it's fun. I love it. Um, what is your best piece of advice for uh, a woman or a man who wants to come into this role and help lead what these professional athletes are doing on the field that makes them better? I would say just looking back on my experiences, um, you know, find a handful of high quality people that are in a position that you want to be in and don't, you know, make contact with them, but don't right off the start come in asking for a job but genuinely want to get to know them as a person, their history, their experience, um, lessons that they learned. Um, I was, you know, my mentors, they offered to have me come up and shadow them for a day and I learned so much. And then that uh, eventually led to, of course, everybody knows somebody. And that led to opportunities in other places. And you just, you take advantage of those opportunities listen don't go in thinking that you know everything and but definitely speak your piece when when you get the opportunity to